and welcome to Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. I'm your host, Thomas Connolly. I happen to be a gay actor, and I live in the gayest city of them all, West Hollywood, California. Now, in this episode, we're profiling one of the great actresses of all time. The American Film Institute, the AFI, rates her in the top five classic cinema actresses. For many years, she was the highest paid actress at MGM Studios. Now, film critic Ty Barr said that she had a naturalism that we hadn't seen before. With just her eyes, she could go from rage to sorrow in a close-up. Now, she was a paradox in many ways. Radiant, yet low-key. Beautiful, yet unassuming. Bold presence, yet reclusive. Now, who am I referring to? One of Sweden's greatest imports, the magnificent Greta Garbo. And yes, I believe Greta Garbo was a lesbian. As a movie star, Greta Garbo could do no wrong. Now, you know that life is often a dance of sorts. When you pull away from a person, they often chase you back. Well, no one knew this better than Greta Garbo. Her on-screen mantra, I want to be alone, made her flirtatious, elusive, and hard to get. Now, there was a huge curiosity factor whether this Swedish star could transition from the silent films to the talkies. Unlike some of her counterparts, for example, her frequent co-star, John Gilbert, he was literally laughed off the screen with the advent of sound. But Greta Garbo made a sensational transition to the talkies. Now, Greta Garbo was a recognized dramatic actress and comedic actress. Now, some of her well-known dramatic films were Anna Christie and Camille. Now, one biographer, Barry Paris, wrote that Greta Garbo had an affair with the older Academy Award-winning actress, Marie Dressler, during the making of Anna Christie. Now, one of my favorite dramatic films of Greta Garbo is Camille, where she plays the long-suffering, always ill, too chronically sick to ever get out of bed. Oh, woe is me. Now, one of Greta Garbo's great comedic roles was her Oscar-nominated performance in Ernest Lubitsch's Ninotchka. Now, one of Greta Garbo's most commercially successful films was Queen Christina, where she plays a rather aggressive, butch, tough lead character. No research required for that role. Okay, Greta Garbo never married and never had any children. Greta Garbo reportedly suffered with bouts of depression. It was also reported that in 1926, she briefly dated her co-star John Gilbert, but that quickly fizzled. It was her female relationships that were far more prominent and pervasive for the rest of Garbo's life. Now, the great actress, Louise Brooks, oh, in my opinion, she was really underrated. Promise me you'll check out her movie, Pandora's Box. Well, anyways, Louise Brooks publicly stated that she had a brief lesbian affair with Greta Garbo. Now, Greta Garbo has had numerous biographers, and most of them have stated that Greta Garbo has had dalliances and affairs with the likes of Marlena Dietrich, Claudette Colbert, Joan Crawford, and Swedish actress Ona Munson. Now, specifically, author Barry Paris wrote about Greta Garbo's lesbian affair with Marlena Dietrich during the making of the 1925 film, The Joyless Street. Now, coming full circle, Three decades later, Frank Sinatra's personal valet, George Jacobs, said that once when he was at Frank Sinatra's Palm Springs home, he watched as Marlena Dietrich and Greta Garbo were naked, poolside, fondling each other and kissing. However, Greta Garbo had two very long-term prominent relationships with Swedish actress Mimi Pollock and American author and playwright 
Mercedes de Acosta. Now, most of the details of these relationships were recently revealed through correspondence and letters. Now, upon the 100th birthday of Greta Garbo in 2005, the estate of Mimi Pollock released some 60 letters which revealed the details, the passion, the love between Greta Garbo and Mimi Pollock. In one of the letters, I thought it was interesting that Greta Garbo referred to herself as the father of Pollock child. Now, not to be outdone, the Philadelphia Rosenbach Museum has a permanent collection of 67 letters between Greta Garbo and Mercedes de Acosta. These 67 letters reveal their passionate, loving, intimate, turbulent relationship as well. Now, it must be noted that Mercedes de Acosta really got around. She had some legendary, well-documented lesbian relationships with Ala Nazimova, Valentino's wife, and many said his beard, and the brilliant choreographer dancer Isadora Duncan. Now, cementing her mystique, Greta Garbo made her last film in 1941 at the age of 35, and she boldly announced, that's it. It's over, you'll never see me on the screen again. And you know what, she wasn't kidding. Now, Greta Garbo was offered numerous projects for a film comeback, but she said a resounding no to all of them. Now, looking back at her time in Tinseltown, Greta Garbo said, I was tired of Hollywood. There were many days I had to force myself to go to the studio. I really wanted another life. And she got exactly that. Greta Garbo lived out the rest of her life in her multi-million dollar apartment in New York City. Greta Garbo was renowned for her unbelievably precious art collection with the likes of Picasso, Renoir, Bonnard, Jolensky, and Warhol. Greta Garbo was constantly hounded by the paparazzi. She invented the style of the trench coat, the sloppy hat, and the oversized sunglasses, copied by many a celebrity, especially Jack Yeo. Now, once she was living in New York City, Greta Garbo continued her relationships with Mimi Pollock and Mercedes de Acosta, but it never reached the point where she wound up cohabitating with either of them. Well, that's about it for this episode. And yes, I wish that Greta Garbo had been more straightforward and honest and open about her lesbian relationships. But maybe, just maybe in Greta Garbo's case, it contributed to her enigmatic, reclusive, mysterious image. And Norma Desmond, for you Sunset Boulevard fans, had nothing on the great Greta Garbo. Well, this is Thomas Connolly for Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. If you like the show, could you please like and subscribe? That would really help us. Well, until next time, bye-bye.